It may have similarities to Embermane, but don't be fooled. This shock type behemoth has its own unique tricks to take on slayers that oppose it. So today, we'll be learning how to take on Stormclaw in this week's Behemoth Breakdown. So before starting your hunt, here are a few things you may want to know. Like Embermane, Stormclaw has a habit of taunting slayers every once in a while, so take full advantage of the openings to get some free hits in. And Stormclaw also has both an Aether Charged and an Enraged state. Entering its Aether Charged state, the Behemoth will summon a Stormcloud above each Slayer. And within the group of Slayers, one will be randomly chosen to have Bolts of Lightning strike the Slayer's last known location, which goes on for three strikes. This can be avoided either by running or dodging the strikes. As for its Enraged state, like most Behemoths, Stormclaw will have an increase in attack speed, which makes this Behemoth's attacks very fast, especially when it's also Aether Charged. So to help prepare for these quick attacks, let's take a look look at the moves you'll encounter. Mostly used when the behemoth has enough distance from the slayer, Stormclaw will fire a shock ball as it leaps backwards towards the slayers. This slow moving, and I mean slow moving ball, is very easy to avoid even with some minor changes in your position. But what makes this move so important for a slayer is that it can be reflected back at Stormclaw, which stuns and stops the behemoth in its tracks for a few seconds. This might put you at risk of getting hit by the ball, but the benefits that you get from this is well worth the danger. Danger. Quickly leaping towards the Slayer, Stormclaw will swing its claws to strike those not quick enough to avoid it. It's going to take some practice to read the movements, but if you can see the Behemoth slightly lean back, this is a clear sign this move is about to happen. A move taken straight out of Embermane's moveset, the Behemoth will charge the Slayer and use the move Swipe when it gets close. Like Embermane, Stormclaw can also get interrupted when using this move, so time your attack and send this behemoth to the ground to get some extra hits in. Very similar to Embermane, Stormclaw will swing its head around to hit slayers near the front or the side of the behemoth. But unlike our fiery friend, Stormclaw always leaves itself open after using this attack. And what's also interesting is despite its size, this move is fairly easy to avoid. Slowly shifting towards the Slayer, the Behemoth will lunge itself and try to chomp down on those unable to get away. Fortunately, due to the long wind-up time of this move, it's fairly easy to avoid. Very similar to Embermane's Tailspin, Stormclaw will spin roughly 180 degrees, hitting Slayers standing too close. If you watch the Behemoth, it will lower its front legs and shift its back legs, which is a clear indication it's about to spin. Briefly standing on its legs, the behemoth will jump up and land on its front paws, creating an impact that affects a small area. This attack is slow and can be avoided by staying close to the hind legs, but if you need to stay by the head, simply dodge backwards or to the sides to continue your brain bashing barrage. Leaping and running around the players, Stormclaw will create pylons that generate arcs of electricity to trap players in. At the end of this move, the Behemoth will charge at a Slayer. I highly recommend taking out these pylons quickly, otherwise it can get pretty difficult to move around. The fastest way to destroy them is to target the ones that bridge between two other pylons. Doing so will open up the area and give you a chance to boop and punish Stormclaw. Now that you have the knowledge, hopefully this will be enough to aid you in your next Stormclaw encounter. If you want to support me, use this creator code when you make your next epic purchase. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope to see you in Dauntless.